Digitel is one of the leading companies for live streaming events, running corporate virtual events, or manage webinars. If you're looking to reach worldwide markets or generate revenue from adding a virtual component to your meetings and conferences, leverage Digitel's 33 years of experience in creating flawless online events. For more information, go to digitellinc.com or email them at contactus at digitel.com. Are you all nine? Okay, so we're going to be out. Yeah. Welcome to Gather Geeks, a podcast by BizBash, the place where people passionate about meetings and events come together. Here are your hosts, BizBash CEO David Adler and editor in chief Beth Kormanick. Hi, David. Hey, Beth. Here we are, another Gather Geeks. And today we are talking with Sarah Shuey, who is the founder and CEO of Happily, a nationwide network of freelance event planners in the United States. She is also the co-founder of TED Active, the founder of EXP, the co-founder of The Margin, which makes space for people of color at conferences, and the board president of the internet radio station Dub Lab. She's an event entrepreneur, obviously, as you can tell by this, and constantly thinking about the future of the industry. David, how did you come to know Sarah? I was speaking at a conference in San Francisco, and she comes up and says, oh my God, you have to help me on this. You have to see what I'm doing. And we immediately hit it off because her thinking is so future, just a, on a future wave. And I was totally attracted to that energy. Mm hmm you know, even in the world of AI, which is a subject that you're going to get into with Sarah, and even in the world of virtual events and events taking place on social media, the world of face-to-face -face has not gone away. And brands, agencies, and others, they all need creatives to pull it off. Yeah, she talks about the, the new creative uh, economy and sort of the creative layer. And that is a whole nother area that we're, we're looking into, that we're trying to explore, because creativity is still going to be the thing that's going to disrupt the standards of AI, so that you're always changing it up a little bit to give AI more to, to search and more to find out about. Exactly. So let's take a listen. Why don't you first talk about what you're trying to do with Happily, and then we're going to go with uh, the conference that you're planning as well. So talk about what your theory is of Happily, and I'll sort of butt in with lots of questions. Okay, sure. So Happily is a nationwide network of freelance event planners and event teams uh, that are available on demand for production agencies, community managers, leaders, organizers, um, and individuals who are planning events. So the idea um, is that there are a lot of, I came up with this idea while I was at, at TED, um, and being sort of like in the belly of the beast, uh, people have ideas, a lot of people have ideas, but not the best ways to execute them. Um, so that's what we were really focused on. And what did on. you see? Why did why did you come up with this idea at TED? And we want to talk a little bit about your background as well. Sure. But why why did where did you see the need for great uh, execution? Did you see that execution was falling apart in some places that people weren't trained? Yeah, the, it wasn't that it. Well, yes, yeah, sure, execution's falling apart, but also it wasn't it wasn't really polished um, to to a level that you know met standards while while we were at. Ted, right? So, you know, we would have these temp staffing agencies. And when you're in places like where we were in Palm Springs, um, you know, it's kind of, I mean, look, I used to work at temp staffing agencies when I was in high school and whenever I didn't have a job. So I kind of see like temp agencies as, or staffing agencies as places where you kind of get like people like unemployable or in weird transition, but versus, you know, so I saw this trend of like freelancers, right? Like sort of bubbling up and people wanting to work for themselves, um, but necessar not necessarily having the structure to support them in doing that. Um, so, you know, really at Happily, what we're doing is we're attracting entrepreneurs you know, or like that are starting their entrepreneurs or people who are like career freelancers that just like well, eat one project after are the other. We in, we're in the gig economy for the event industry too. You hear about yeah. people that are traveling all around the world with brands and doing specific things. Is that the case that you hear about? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, well, what do you mean by that? I mean, there's... Well, if you'll follow, it's like a production company will go and they'll bring people um, with them. Um, and they want to make sure that they have the same quality anywhere in the world. 
Oh, right. So, right. so but they're not hiring full time staff. They're hiring gig workers right. to do that. Right. And and I think that that you're seeing that more and more. Yeah. So you know what we're seeing is is that uh, brands uh, come up with uh, huge campaigns. Um, they've got all of the the data analytics. They understand their customers. They they know that they need to put on a tour or a summit. Um, then they go and they turn over to the creative layer, you know, to all these different agencies and they're like, help us make this cool, bring this to life. Um, agencies work really hard in figuring out like, you know, how they, they bring that experience. And then um, what happens is the lead time then to the execution has gotten so short um, that and also these campaigns and these brands keep wanting bigger, better, give, bigger, Give me bigger. an example of, of so that they, kind of what, a camp, what, you, what you're talking about when you say a campaign. Oh, sure. So uh, when there's like a new product rollout, right? right okay. So um, like, you know, back when Airbnb launched its, uh, launched its experiences product where now before you could only, you know, order a home on Airbnb and now you can order trips and uh, experience the local economy with local guides. So that was a huge, big move for them. Um, they went and they hired, uh, they hired a uh, Ryan Seacrest agency civic to help them bring that campaign, you know, to life and, they actually placed it within this other this this other event that they were already doing Airbnb open for their hosts. And so, you know, Civic is going around and, and working with Airbnb throughout the year or even two years. Right. Trying to sort of pull all the pieces together of the speakers and the, the design and, you know, what are all the different experiences and how do we bring them to life? And then when they get like two months away, they start to freak out, right? Because there's so many details for like, especially at that level, you know, of experience that's expected to make it happen. And so that's really where Happily comes in, where we come in to fill all of the gaps um, of the logistics to make sure, you know, our mission is to just really make sure that events are executed better than the way that they are planned. You had a theory that you were telling me about, about the creative layer. Talk, talk about that. What I find so yeah. interesting is the, your perspective on the future of this of our industry yeah so i mean it's not just our industry it's the Everything. future of yeah it's the like like look you've got ai that's coming out and that is definitely the future you have blockchain that's coming out and that's yep. the future right so there's all this like tech stuff um but you know as actually when you think about like the future of work and as ai automates things right and uh blockchain starts to actually help distribute uh work across across the planet, then um, the layer really that is going to uh, be sort of like protected or the layer that actually needs like the highest you know, quality of work is going to be that creative layer. So creatives are, you know, we're looking at like stepping into this area where if we have all this free time because the robots are doing it for us, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, um, you know, what are we going to do with that time? How are we going to stay relevant? And that's where that creative economy comes in. And so what is your vision of what that, what does it look like? Get, dig deeper a little bit so we can explain to the people that are the Luddites yes, yes. that the world is changing. Yeah. Um, How do you so, articulate it? Yeah, that's a great question. I, and I haven't ha had to yet. So I'm, it's. We'll work on it together. We'll do it now. But uh, so, okay. So then um, the cre so the creative like, okay, so then let's just say, like, like again, taking this, like, brand campaign example, um, you know, brands know that they're, they're going to get better and better at knowing what their ROI is um, for different interactions or experiences. When someone touches a product versus when someone sees a product, um, wh whether they see that on a digital medium or in a physical, you know, in a physical space. So you're saying, though, that AI is going give to give us all these oh, details yeah. so that we we will have we'll crack the code on what people like yeah because i mean ai is the the whole the whole thing behind artificial intelligence is that it becomes you know smarter than us essentially um and you know as we are more and more dependent upon our devices and we're feeding it our personal data um and when you're you're seeing data like at scale like one person's data but like multiplied millions of times hundreds of thousands of times then you 
then the uh, the technology, the AI will be able to predict behaviors that we don't even know because maybe we're not at that particular stage, you know, yet in our lives. So it'll break our behaviors, you know, down to a science. And so the future then has to be one where if we as humans have become repetitive, right, and predictable, then that creative uh, layer for how do we reimagine and recontextualize ourselves as humans is going to be the most important, you know, piece of continuing to evolve and innovate, you know, within work. So are, are, you, are you kind of saying that, 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 that creativity is going to disrupt the AI metrics that they find so that we can break it to make it better? Yeah, that's that's part of evolution, right? Yeah, so yeah. exactly, and that's part of evolving. So and experiential is a big high touch piece of this. Yeah, experiential is really driving, you know, the innovation behind all of this. And so I think that like, we're starting like experiential is a word now experience right. experiential has been you know going on for a really long time anyone in the events business knows right that experiences and events and and face-to-face interactions like the chaos of sorts that ensues the things you can't predict in in having a conversation with somebody that's where the real quote unquote magic is right 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 and so ai will be trying to you know trying to basically capture and bottle that magic and every time you know it bottle it they bottle it we are going to use and need creativity to sort of shift it again and keep innovating so experiences are going to be sort of the unpredictable part yeah if, you, if they don't become rote <clears throat> yeah that's right um if you wanted to you know like if you were complacent which i don't think that you know us as humans generally are complacent. We, I don't, I don't see really, really see this like Wally world where everyone just wants to sit in a chair and like, right, right. and have media well, coming at them. So that, right. that experiential creativity is well, going to break a, us out of that. There's a great book called Sapiens. Uh, that's a fantastic book on the, the history of the world, basically, that talks about experiences, but that the interesting thing about experiences is that they have to get more experiential every time you do it. You can't be complacent about an experience. So, Okay, so let's talk about like, what do you mean by like, you know, or what should we be thinking of when we're saying like, be more experiential, right? Well, so it, it can't be it can't be a routine. I, I mean, an, an experience is a temporary situation yeah. that 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 stimulates all of the senses in the body and the chemistry and everything else. And you can't do the same event every year because That's, people yeah. will get bored and turn away and not buy tickets or not get the you know that get that hit out of it yeah you need a fresh new group of people yeah. coming through the yeah. whole thing yeah like so you know with happily what since we are like this sort of like execution layer um you know in the stack of experiential what's really interesting and we're the on-site team is uh so we feel all of the forgotten plans right and we feel all of the mistakes and we're troubleshooting them you know in you know live um and so actually from the ground up when i'm you know when we're looking up and we're looking up at all these different uh, brands and groups and agencies that we're working with, um, you know, who are in this process of we still don't we're still not at that AI point. These people right. are the innovators that are building that. Right. So I'm already starting to see like sort of the formulas behind experiential. Right. Um, and it's a lot of the reason why I started this the summit EXP to bring all these different experience economy pioneers so that they can bump and interact with each other and sort of see like there's a lot of people who are doing like making the same mistakes. Right. Okay. okay. Or what doing. Are, what, OK. <laughs> mistakes. Let's yes. teach the world. What are the mistakes <laughs> that you're seeing that are obvious when you're on the ground, but are not obvious to the strategy people sitting in the offices of the ivory towers of the agencies? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> the mistakes I often see um, relate to, so we, we kind of define things in four quadrants. Um, so there's just the, the registration and the guest experience where, you know, the brand is focusing on just getting the right people in the door, right? The agencies are are focused on like how, you know, where are they going to go? How, how are the logistics of how are they how, how are they going to move? And then when we're actually on site, um, people are forgetting like and brands will uh, the agencies will will 
think about what to wear, you know, and like how everything looks, looks and yeah, is yeah, set yeah, up. Yeah. And then what they're forgetting is, is how to welcome people, right? right? How to greet them. Um, what are the important things about the brand that they need to know? So there's that like execution piece that's being forgotten. So, so in a sense, we're, we're, that's where the Maya Angelou quotient comes in. Right. That's it's right. It's not how, what you tell them, it's how you make them feel. How you make them feel. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that like, uh, I think that like a lot of production companies will, will get so overwhelmed sometimes, you know, with the, with the details or when you have like thousands of people coming through the door, um, even, you know, even just sort of like actually thinking about like numbers at scale, we've seen people miss sort of what, like how much, like sometimes we get really nerdy about it and we'll break it down to, you have 10 seconds. Here are the five words that you can say in those 10 seconds. Okay, what are they? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> you know I've asked. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for being here. Really? That's it. Thank you for being here helps people like realize that they are now like stepping out of wherever they, their homes, their cars, whatever, like making people feel present and also graciously making them feel a part of the conversation, inviting people to participate and engage. And that's not a budget buster. No, absolutely <laughs> not. It's it's a it's a frame of it's a frame of mind, you know, and so there's this uh yeah, there's just this interesting um, thing that's forgotten in the logistics. Uh, you know, the logistics. Look, I'm like a data nerd, and I also love like building stuff with my hands, right? And and working with people. But um, at the end of the day, everybody who comes just remembers the nice person that smiled to them. You know, they remember the person who was mean to them, and uh, and that's those are the impressions so, that are left about a product. So you're taking a page from Disney. In many cases, right? Maybe. I mean, yeah, I mean that's what they, they are really good at that. Hospitality has been good at that. Danny Meyer has been doing those great things with his restaurants. But, but what happens, I guess, in events is that it's sort of the, the stepchild that turns out probably when we do the AI analysis is the most important thing. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's the it's the well it's the most human thing yeah, right yeah. and so as we I think it's great that uh, I, I think we need AI I'm so excited to see like the the rote mundane things that well we're it's going to prove broken. it's going to prove the instincts that we have for the idea that you know it's not the conference it's the hallway yeah conversation it's it's the it's the it's the it's the oxytocin exchange between people that are connecting in different ways. You know, it's the it's the things that we don't really think are important become important, and I think AI is going to prove it, even though we have an instinct that it's probably the case. Yeah, um, yeah, it's funny. I was at I was at TED last week, and I um, met this woman who founded the Google Empathy Lab. Oh, tell us about that. Oh, yeah, I'm really excited about that. So, like, what she's really doing is she works with um, she brings uh, creatives together with all of the AI technologists and is helping like Google assistant, right? Like basically be more human, be more. And by human, she really defines it as like having empathy and being empathetic. So, um, this idea that understanding, um, what a person is feeling and being able to, um, relate and match that to a directional, a direction in behavior, um, is really interesting. And, and if we're not being more mindful about the inputs that we take in as humans and the outputs that we put out, um, we will be in a, a situation where the, where AI is, is, is going to be a negative, it could be a negative well, reflection at, uh, of us or a positive these one. These cognitive events that IBM is, is working on yep. is all about, you know, matching and making sure your music is what you like. And, and all these things, but is it? Does it have that human element to it, or is it so formulaic? I think we're you still early. You will be this person, you know. And it's like, yeah, I think we're still early. Yeah. And um, and if you, but I think I like how I like how they're framing it in terms of empathy because yeah. it asks the questions of of how are how are you feeling and why are you feeling that way and within you know the solutions are always within every problem, right? So if we really, really try to well, think about. Well, also, yeah, think, go ahead, continue that. Yeah, if we really, if we really try to think about, um, you know, what is causing us to feel a certain way, then we can design 
for us to amplify that or remove that, you know, add or subtract. I mean, it is kind of like describing love. <laughs> you know, how do you, what is it? You don't really know what it is, you know, yeah. when you get it. But when you get a group of people together, I mean, that's what's the beauty of events and why I love events is the kind of the new town squares in the world that, that when people actually get up off their couches and turn down their phones, uh, that when they have human connections, the technology amplifies it afterwards and before. But when you're in it, it's a whole different experience. Yeah, but again, I would I would say that we're still early stages yeah, totally. in, in thinking about how events actually get people to engage. Yeah, because it's, um, it's all magical right now. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I and I, I know that it's it really comes down to empowering everybody to feel like they are a part of the creative and the creation process of a community or a movement. Is the, temp is the temporary staff that you're creating part of the creative layer? Or is that just the execution layer or, or do they have to sort of have their own sense of creativity when they're actively in events so they're thinking that way? I think they're, we're an extension of, you know, so it's it's really funny, but I can like, I, like sort of like events, people are chameleons, you know, like we can like, like fluidly go from and understand, you know, one brand's language to uh, to another's. Um, and so we're, we're really trying to extend the creative um expression of a campaign or a brand or a product or a message or a community, you know, by it's sort of like part, it's not mimicking that. Right. So, but it's okay. bringing our own sensibilities, things that right. experiences we've had in the past and adding that. Are brands actually, you know how, the, how brands all have their brand books and their looks and their feels are brands <laughs> actually creating that for the people at their events now. And have you, what's your experience with that? Like, how do you act? What is the way Airbnb acts versus the way Facebook acts versus the way Google acts? Is there a different casting provision that's happening or is that something that's going to happen? Yeah, um, I think that they're they're trying to do that, right? Um, but again, we're still sort of like Starting early. Yeah. No. yeah. Um, so, so people like, you know, like their brand values are always generosity and openness. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you know but, for but, years I worked, I, mean, I worked at a company called Prime Media and we did, um, well, I did the 50th anniversary anniversary of 17 magazine and the magazine editors were brilliant at mm. the personalities of a magazine brand mm. and every aspect of that was thought out the music list the uh, the the attitude everything and and it and it totally uh spilled into every aspect of their live events and their and their graphic uh, identity yeah i mean what we're you know what what I do with happily is just because we are putting out fires all the time. So, um, we help sort of like role model, like what are these fires that are happening and how do you actually, uh, respond to those? So we've had over 50,000 people apply to work with us. Um, and the way that we go through and, and, um, and sort of like sort of screen for people is we have um, everybody take scenario based exams. And uh, these exams are written, you know, by myself and other senior producers inside of Happily. And and it's all like fire after fire. <laughs> like What does that mean? Explain that. Uh, yeah. For instance, the scenarios are fire after fire. The scenarios are fire after fire. So, uh, you know, like let's just take a wedding scenario. The, um, you know, the cake topper is missing which one of these things would you do, right? Grab flowers, throw it on, throw it onto the cake, you know, <laughs> like ask the mother of the bride, ask the bride. Like these are all What's the answer? acceptable answers. All of them, <laughs> all of the above. And there's an all of the above and a none of the above, but, but actually, you know, for us it would always be like ask the bride first, right? Um, she's the one that that's that's designing her own cake usually. Are there so. any other questions on the on the agency side that uh, that that you um, like that are that stand out? I have this to. Kind I have of to fun. Think, I we should do a whole thing on just the questions. Just the exams. I know everybody loves taking the exams, uh, and and they're and they're tough because there's a, a layer of subjectivity to to Everything, them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. What's of, like the worst answer that someone could give in your exam? Into one question, like one that's obviously not right but people say it anyway 
Oh, I don't like honestly because can't it's all it. like yeah. I'll, I can, we'll we'll uh, we'll yeah, we'll, we'll, can, we'll do like, another show on this if you don't mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, whole another show. We're just taking the exam. Just the, just well, let's do a quiz show. We'll do a quiz show. A podcast quiz show. Fan, that sounds like fun. That would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so go into so you you do think that there is an issue with you know this whole new layer is is there's not a lot of companies that are doing this other than temp agencies. You're you're sort of pioneering in this area. Uh, it sounds like with happily. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to think that you yeah. know we're we're pioneering. Um, what and what I think is really cool is that we're really celebrating um, the individuals. We're celebrating freelancers. We're celebrating entrepreneurs. Bring your experiences with your own you know companies that you're working with. Right, right. Um, you know we have a lot of people who are working at brands and are moonlighting with us, right? Really? So yeah, so it's like um, what we love that you know we love uh, just all of the experience experiences that our team has before, you know, us at Happily, we're really just connecting, you yeah, know, yeah. we're just a platform that connects. So in this last section, let's just go into your, the conference that we're planning. This is going to be the high level conference in Napa. Yes. Uh, in, uh, June 13th and 14th uh, in Napa Valley, EXP experience, experience. Um, and what I'm doing is really bringing experience economy pioneers together to share best practices in an experiential learning environment. It's very meta. Give us a little bit more uh, like the wows of this. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, we're going to save some surprises, but you know, when people arrive, we're actually starting off with a blind, a blind date, you know, one-on-one -on -one and coffees. Um, so we're keeping the, uh, intentionally keeping the guest count super low. So it's less than uh, Dunbar's number and less than 150 people. Dunbar says that, you know, 150 is the maximum number of people that you can actually know in your life. So it's super small and we're starting out, um, you know, with one-on-ones and we're putting two people together and saying, figure out why we put you together. Like there's, there's two guys who both got married in Napa, right? So it may not necessarily be just related to uh, what they're doing, you know, with their work life, but also, you know, with their professional life. Um, so, and we're sort of setting them up in blind dates in the beginning. And then we move into workshops of like five to eight people, really, really tiny workshops, you know, 90 minutes long, um, intended to be super deep dives um, on a subject matter um, and things that people like usually don't talk about. Like um, we're having someone from MKG come uh, and actually show us like, how they work the magic of their budgets, right? Like, so you always want to see like what somebody is doing, but nobody opens up those doors. Um, so, but really small workshops so that you become like best friends with the people that are in there and people can really have enough time to share what their struggles are or ask questions and get into it. Um, then we go and we exponentially sort of double from there. Um, and we'll have local activities and groups of like 20, 25 people um, that have a social impact component. We chose Napa because we looked at, you know, what were the, the areas that were hit by like a national emergency. Um, so, you know, we're really cognizant of the fact that like as experience uh, and community builders, we are, you know, economy and, and revenue drivers for locations. Um, so giving back uh, there and then um, we'll come back and do some more workshops. We have siestas actually in, intentionally planned. I like to say that we're putting the nap in Napa so that you can like, <laughs> funny, funny. you know, so that you could really um, digest information and be fresh, you know, feel fresh and just like expansive um, throughout the, the course of two really power, power pack days. And how does one um, participate in this? Uh, you'll have to you'll have to apply. Um, so we're you know we're really we really want to create a space where these these pioneers can come and be open um, and share. We'll be documenting information um, you know from workshops um, and putting putting it actually in a, in a book that people can can buy so that right. there will always be uh, lessons learned that are democratized and shared with everyone. What's the how do, what's the email address to or the, the way to apply? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it, you'll have to apply um, and just go to our website. It's expexp.co, co, um, and then you can learn more there. And then also just you know, sit, put, click a little button. Click to a apply. little button. Yeah. Apply. How much of this did you pick up from from your experience with TED Active and things like that? I mean, that is, I would assume, some one of your training grounds for this. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm really excited is um, is 
uh, while I was at TED Active, um, what we we really did were sort of like the mothership for the super fans and creatives of TED to come together and innovate like new distribution models for ideas worth spreading. Um, and it was this the highly experiential retreat. So this is kind of like TED Active 2.0. And um, I'm really excited because it's like like basically after having some time to think about what worked and didn't work. Like it's what's really cool is, you know, I was like, it's like 10 years later almost from TED Active and our community, we stopped TED Active five years ago and our community is still together. And like, I'll tell you every single person that I meet goes, oh man, I miss those days, right? So really excited about, um, about taking that and expanding it to the events industry overall. Um, it should be, it should be pretty, I hate saying this word magical, but it's going to be pretty magical. <laughs> well, we look forward to it. Now, how do you get in touch with, how do you apply to be part of Happily? Um, Happily.io, right? Happily.io slash apply. Um, okay. And uh, it's it's really it's it's a really simple process. I mean, anybody can create a profile on our site. But you have to be... What what is the qual what are the qualifications from an event perspective? Yeah, so again, we have um, you know we have these these exams that help us right. screen through people, but we provide uh, three tiers of planners from assistants to coordinators to producers. Um, so it's it's kind of like we actually like have like a corporate ladder that's like an uncorporate ladder, you know, for freelancers to sort of climb up the ranks. Um, so, so really anybody again can have an account and, uh, you know, the exams help us basically give first right of refusal to those who are the most qualified. Um, but you know, if no one's available, then our clients can see the full range of people who right. are, right. um, and choose from there. Okay. So, um, you're listening to this podcast and you're a, uh, a person that's getting into this industry. What advice do you give to the younger you, in a sense, uh, uh, based on what's going on in the world today, too? Yeah, and, and thinking about that creative economy future, mm -hmm. um, you know, my, my best advice is to really figure out what makes you different um, and just do a lot more of that over and over and keep what making... Is that, how did, what did that mean for you? Um, so what that means for me, actually, when I figured out what makes me different... Um, it was when I thought about what do people make fun of me for? Um, cause when someone's making fun of you, they're, they're literally pointing at you and laughing because it's a social norm to be able to say like that difference is so strange and funny. Um, I used to get made fun of for, uh, for like being kind of like an eco geek. <laughs> um, I was working, uh, in 2002 in a, a catering company in Boston and I, it's my first job, uh, you know, in the event space and I couldn't, understand like the food waste and I was like cutting up papers and turning them into like little notepads, you know, like reusing them and, and cause I'm from the West coast and that's what we do. Um, and so, you know, that's how I really realized that, Oh, like what, makes me different is that I actually care about like our resources. Where do things come and, and go um, in the event space? And I found out that like events are the second most wasteful industry after construction. So it's kind of cool that like for at least for me, what makes me different can actually also make a difference um, in our world. And, and I would just really encourage anybody that um, is working, whether they're starting or whether you've been in the business for 20 years, you know, figure out what is that one thing that you do that nobody else can replicate um, and find a way to share that as many times as you can. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Ara. This has been fantastic. Thanks for having I me. I love the fact that you're such a pioneer and an innovator in this industry. We're back in our studio. And David, this is a very interesting idea to bring third-party planners, career freelancers, and event entrepreneurs into one network where they have structure and support. Do you think this has legs? I do. I think that this is, you know, part of this gig economy that we've got going where people really want to get the best uh, day of people to help on an event. And I think what she said about the feeling piece that that's still hard to legislate and that you have to really know how to do that. And, the, you know, the touch, the high touch piece is still the hardest piece.
Mm -hmm. I really liked the idea of requiring everyone to take these scenario based exams on how to put out various fires at events. She gave the example of the missing cake topper at a wedding. Uh, But, you know, you and I and all of our listeners could come up with a million of these scenarios. I was thinking, you know, what do you do when the fire alarm goes off during your conference? Something we've dealt with. Uh, What do you do when you can't find your keynote speaker or when an attendee behaves badly? I don't know what comes to your mind. Yeah, it's much more fun to do it as a game than in real life. (laughs) <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Uh, and again, our our listeners, you can learn more about Sarah and what she's doing at happily.io. Great. So Beth, what's going on at BizBash? Well, thinking about Sarah being a pioneer at TED Active and uh, speaking of TED, be sure to check out our coverage of this year's TED conference, which is always full of great ideas. Uh, Another major story that we have recently posted is about Coachella activations. Every year, these are both some of our uh, most popular stories because they show just the range of creativity among event professionals and top-notch execution. They are certainly FOMO-inducing stuff and uh, everyone can check that out at bizbash.com. Great. Well, I guess we're done for the day. See you next week. Okay. Until next time. Gather on. Gather on. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, Google Play, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to leave us a rating and review. It helps others discover the Gather Geeks podcast. We'd also love to hear from you. You can leave feedback on Twitter at GatherGeeks or leave us an email, gathergeeks at bizbash.com. We hope you'll join us again for the next episode of Gather Geeks. Until then, gather on. If you are looking for a state-of-the-art learning management system, take a look at Digitel's newest platform, Opus DX. Opus DX offers the robust platform for event organizers and associations to manage content. To learn more and schedule a demo, email them at contactus at digitelinc.com. That's contactus at D-I-G-I-T-E-L-L-I-N-C dot com. This episode is also sponsored by Event Leadership Institute. Invest in yourself and your staff with self-paced online event education designed to fit into your busy schedule. Subscribe to the Event Leadership Institute for only $25 per month and gain access to an extensive on-demand video library of classes as well as interviews with industry leaders. Best of all, you can watch classes in small pieces or all at once. For more information, visit eventleadershipinstitute.com.